Hello, good evening everyone. You are now on an episode of From the Living Room. This is Chong Wun Yong, long time no see. And I hope that everybody is coping well in this period. Um, while in this period, a lot of our artistic work have slowed down on stage, but I think that we are all glad that it gave us a little bit of time to think about ourselves and most importantly, to learn about one another. So tonight, I'm very thrilled, very excited, if a little bit nervous and <laughs> intimidated to have two very special people with us today. They are the one of the most successful, established and sought after musicians in Singapore. Okay, so let's bring on Muhammad Noor and Ridwan Zalani. Hello. Hello, Hi, everyone. Man. Hello. Yeah. How is how is everyone doing? <laughs> Wonderful. <Good>. Great. <laughs> Yeah, Driving, as positive. good as we can be. Yeah, positive. Yeah. Okay, so um, to a lot of, of our viewers tonight, I suspect that they might already know who are you guys, but maybe Muhammad No, you want to tell us a little bit uh, 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 about yourself and your practice and your passion? Um, well, um, many of them would know me as a drummer percussionist, uh, and I, I'm, I'm happy to be a Singaporean here, born here, and uh, Grew up in a musical family and my brothers, they all play music and I, I learned a lot from my brothers. My late father was a musician himself, but he gave up in a very and, and uh, passed on the knowledge to us. So we carry on. In my younger days, I played a lot of instruments because growing up in a musical family, I started playing percussions, you know, and then guitar, keyboards, and then I was forced to play. Uh, not say, yeah, I can say forced, lah, you know. Uh, Parents, you know, dad wanted me to play a lot of instruments. I was like the, I was like the one that <laughs> been picked, and then say you got to play flute, you got to play clarinet, you got to play saxophone. So I, I, I went on and played all the instruments for good, for a good ten to fifteen years of my life. But I think uh, when I reached, uh, at, as, when I was a teenager, I decided that I, need, I wanted to be a drummer and percussionist. So my passion grew for it, and uh, I started playing uh, different kinds of percussion. I, I just totally fall in love with the sound of drums. And um, by the time I finished army and came out, I decided that music was going to be my career, uh, and I took it on. And um, it was kind of a tough journey, but uh, <clears throat> however, um, I was very determined that I was able to do it. So even though I was starting to do a few other jobs in my beginning of my life, uh, I didn't stop practicing. I always wanted to go back home and practice and practice because music was that what I wanted to do. Opportunities opened up. Um, I met uh, one of our fav most favorite drummers, the late Edmund Branson Jr. He introduced me to a lot of musicians. Uh, then I met uh, one of the best Asian drummer, uh, Louis Prakasam from Malaysia. He gave me opportunity to play with his band Asia Beat. That opened up a lot of scope. Many people noticed me. And um, Mr. L uh, Eddie Mazuki, great composer, arranger, Singaporean, he opened up the market for me in the Malay music industry. And um, from then on, that opportunity opens more doors for me to meet uh, people like uh, King Long in the Chinese music industry. So all that opened up more opportunities to be in the English music industry. And you know, I met Jeremy Montero and I started doing gigs with them. And it went on. It started one by one. It started opening up, opening up, opening up. So I, and um, of course, I, I love performing. And, and uh, I started playing in the clubs. And then the concert opportunities came. Um, I started performing touring with all most of the Chinese artists around, and uh, also the Malay artists. And I played with like a few of them, like Ning Baizura and uh, uh, Ramli Sareb, and and few few other musicians, Malaysian artists that I've to uh, did sessions with. And Chinese industry, like many would know, uh, David Tao, Wang Li Hong, you know, Jackie Chan, uh, Jackie Chung, Ami, you know, even JJ, uh, Singaporean. R2, you know, so, yeah, so that gives me a lot of opportunities. And, and uh, of course, in the Indian music industry, I've always been very active. That was my roots. Indian music was my roots, you know, and the tabla is one of my most favorite instruments. Yeah. What do you, what about drums you fell in love with? If you just to let us, just curious. I, I guess, I, I think when I was playing uh, music at a very young age, I think, the, the, you know, we, we always go out and perform in wedding functions, you know, in the weekends. Every weekend we are packed, 
my brothers and I, we are, every weekend, never stop carrying instrument down, four stories down. There was no lift then. So carrying all the musical instrument down, up, performing. And then you had a big crowd watching you from the back in the wedding, you know. It, it was very exciting to have these people, your friends, you know. And it's like kind of very motivating to you. It's like, no, oh, this guy, this young boy is like, you know, playing drums so well and, you know, he's, he's so talented. And people come and then after all that performance, they go and eat food, you know, biryani, my favorite food, you know. So <laughs> it, it was then, it, it, it's all that growing up days of playing drums and that excitement that you get pe meeting people. Somehow it just, it, it just injected and it's like, it became part of me. It's like, I just want to play drums. Even in schools, I'll be like banging on the tables. My fingers don't stop. My teacher will start making noise. Can you stop your fingers? And then I will be on my lap. I'll start moving my fingers. So it's never stopped. So I, I, I don't know why. It, it, it just went on. I, I guess it's, it's my journey. I think, I guess it's my calling. It was a blessing and I, I'm so grateful for that. You know, having to play music and to share love through music. It's beautiful. And, and, and you will continue to do it until you can, right? Like for um, every day of your life, I guess there's no such thing as I can't. I think, I think when I probably when I, 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 I don't think I will stop ever stop stop playing music. I don't think so. <laughs> that is yeah. true passion, true calling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, um, Ridwan Zalani, hello, brother. Hey, hello everyone. Hey. <laughs> I, so, okay. I always love you... to hear about what now and his stories. Yes. <laughs> There's just a, it's, yeah. So, can you tell us more about yourself also and just to our audiences listening to you? I, I, I lead much a simpler life now, but before, as I was growing up, um, I don't come from a musical family like what now. Um, but I was very, very um, lucky and blessed to have an uncle who would always bring his nephew all around to all the cultural shows. And eventually, at a very young age, I got, got I don't know, sucked in into this whole world of culture and music and performance. I started from the Kirbarat and then slowly I went to play Kumpang and I got involved with some Gamilan works. And then it moved on and, and, and from one led to the other. And then finally, I was... Uh, I, I was in a traditional Malay ensemble, which really um, grew my my attention and my focus in, in into music. And 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 somehow, or rather, I got invited to the Singapore Malay Orchestra. And as I was doing that, um, I quit my 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 diploma in Singapore Poly to went to move on to the Cell College of the Arts. So I'm really cutting the story really short. But that's when I I meet Muhammad No. Uh, Muhammad No is it's not just an ordinary uh, musician and artist. But he's also my teacher, he's also my mentor. And when I was in La Salle, I had the opportunity to have uh, maybe like a three semesters with him. Um, and I, I got to share a lot of time with him. And, and when, I, when I was with him, I was also involved with several different bands, not just exclusively mm -hmm. to the Malay community, but um, bands such as Wikadora Batukara um, and, and many, many more flooded my, my entire life, uh, my activities. And with Matno around and Wikadora, we were basking on the streets. We were doing a lot of things. And somehow or other, it led me to meeting more musicians. And eventually, after all of these things happened, I got a calling to return back to my, my own culture and tradition. Uh, that's when uh, I am now in my life, uh, where I am really busy creating works uh, that breathe the life uh, and the stories of the Malay community in Singapore. Yeah, and I do that through my drums and percussion. And I see you got a lot of Rabanas with you today, right? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I yeah, guess yeah. you are going to show our viewers how you work them, right? Of course, of course. It, 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 it's always a pleasure to share um, what we love most. <laughs> and to be doing this with Muhammad, no, it's a blessing. Uh, nobody would yes. have thought eventually this circuit breaker would bring my teacher and myself together in this collaboration. It's, it's wonderful. Thank you, National Arts Council. Okay, so without further ado, Ridwan, please show us what you are made of. So we will move on to the first song of this segment. It's an original composition by Ridwan called Prelude Gilumbang.
Yeah. Awesome. Okay, let's Thank you. bring you back to the <laughs> uh, so, so the song you just heard is a prelude to the song Gelombang. Uh, it was first performed live but has never been recorded. So it's, a, it's really a treat for everyone out there uh, to be playing with Mr. Muhammad No on this little uh, percussive arrangement. At the start, it, features, it, it featured the Rebana um, as a solo instrument. Um, and then after that, we I, we brought the whole band in. Uh, yeah, we we hope you enjoy that little a uh, short piece as an introduction so to ladies, this night. Ladies and gentlemen, that was literally a world premiere for this song. Okay, it is very special. <laughs> so uh, I am curious. So just now you mentioned Ridwan that you first met Muhammad No when you were a student at LaSalle, right? So. Can you just share with us, like, 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 how, how exactly do you first meet each other, and what was your first impressions of each other? Okay, the story between me and Muhammad No, um, I think we both have different versions of it. But as a little boy growing <laughs> up, um, the first impression and the first thought that I remember of Mister Muhammad No was very way back in the days where I used to go to chimes to listen to live music, and when when I, I saw him performing behind the drum kit and the percussion, and I was blown. I was blown. Um, I I always go to the to the club. I can't remember the club name, but I I buy I bought orange juice and then sit one side and just just catch him <laughs> just to hear him play. Then after that, when I was in La Salle, um, my my dean or my my section leader was asking me. My lecturer was asking me, who would you love to learn drums from or percussion from? I said there's only one guy in Singapore I know that who could give me the the kind of training and the kind of year that I would like to develop. So I went to approach Mr. Muhammad No, and he immediately said yes, why not? <laughs> and then after that, we we got we go we went beyond friends. You know, he's like a father to me. I remember pouring uh, my emotions to him uh, at difficult moments, and I also remember sharing him the joy of my life. So. Uh, Muhammad No again, like I say, it's 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 he's not a regular artist, and that that's my my version. You should ask him. <laughs> yeah, so Muhammad No, does your version differ from his? <laughs> <laughs> well, I I I I don't remember him uh, at 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 chimes, but I used to perform there a lot, and uh, and thank you for coming by and listening to you know and watching me play. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I I guess say I'm being one of the pioneers in percussionists uh, as a percussionist in Singapore. I I played a lot, and I guess uh, Ridwan uh, when when Ridwan approached me, I, I I remember I met his dad once. I mean around somewhere in the year two thousand <laughs> two thousand one. You know, his dad used to come to the restaurant that I I used to perform. He speaks about a lot about Ridwan, but I didn't couldn't recognize. I didn't really know who I was talking about. But he used to tell me my son is very interested in drums. I say, great, let him send him to me. I would love to teach him. I love to share. You know, I would. I, I'm always very willing to give as much as I can. Uh, so one day he approached me and he said, I want to learn percussion from you. And you know, I'm from LaSalle, I'm studying here and we don't have a percussion teacher. And and to be to, to be honest, there was no percussion teacher in Singapore. Even I didn't grow up learning percussions in Singapore. I, I grew up learning percussions from musicians from all around the world who have come to Singapore. And I met them and I learned a lot from them. And my experience was there. And so when he approached me, I was wanting, really wanting to give. And it was an opportunity for me to also like... Um, to be able to teach in LaSalle because, you know, I I don't have any degree or diploma or whatsoever in music. So I'm just a, basically a self-taught musician who learned from musicians around me. So um, when he approached me, it was a wonderful opportunity for me. And I I admire Ridwan, you know, because his determination, his, his passion, his love. Uh, like he said, I, um, I guess my relationship with him was more than just, not just musicians or music or teacher. I think it's, we go more more than that. You know, we share a lot about life. We speak about life. I shared a lot about my experiences in growing up as a human being as well. You know, about the difficulties and the wonderful things about life. So I guess I have motivated him in, in, in many ways. I believe so. And, uh, but, and I always... Uh, if he remembers, I think I always tell him, find your own path, you know, find your own music, find your own sound, you know, and uh, do what you love to do, you know. We, we, I can share with you everything, but at the end, you need to find your own sound and your own journey. And I'm very happy and I'm so 
I'm, I'm, I must say that I'm very, very happy to have him my student because I've seen him grow and I've seen his journey and I've seen, I see him chose his path and I'm so happy that he, you know, he wants to share his passion for traditional Malay music and he has grown great heights, you know. I'm, I'm very proud of him, actually. It's his work. I did nothing. I always tell this to my students. It's, it's, it's the work of the student. It's nothing, it's nothing about the teacher. The teacher can only guide. Everything else depends on the student. And sure, we are. It, work, it, 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 it works. It works both the both way, I guess. The the teacher has to have a very oh, open heart, and 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 the student must oh, be very willing to undergo all the training to 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 gain all the experience you might possibly need. Yeah. And and yeah, and here we are tonight, the two of you together, and, and me. I mean, this is destiny. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, must be. It's, it's a wonderful opportunity. I, 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 I am so happy that to be able to collaborate this, just the two of us. We have, I think we have not done this, not at all. You know, I think this is the first time we're getting together to play, you know, four tunes at least for, for the audience. And uh, just the two of us, I think it's a wonderful, great opportunity. And okay. with that, let's, and with that, so let's go into our second tune, okay? So this song Ooh. is by... No, and the title is Gratitude. Thank you. 
And that was gratitude. Okay, so can we invite Muhammad Noor to tell us a little bit about this song, Gratitude? Uh, thank you. Uh, the song you heard earlier was Gratitude, taken from my second album, uh, which was released last year. Um, yeah, it features the sound of the handpan, and I really wanted to keep that whole album very, uh, very raw. So it was, was very percussive, and then it also features one of uh, another percussionist, Singaporean Reggie Pereira. So it, the sound is basically about the handpan, and it's a, the whole album is more, I would say, it's a journey of life. So yeah, it's a different kind of album, and I thank you for listening. Yeah, we are so happy to listen to Gratitude, which fits the mood of this whole session surprisingly <laughs> and okay so uh, I, i'm curious about one thing i uh, i read that you are the founder of this very long running group called tribal type can you tell us a little more about tribal type uh i should say i was one of the co-founders um which includes the late admiral branson jr uh, also one other percussionist who's living in spain under kumar and also another famous good drummer here in singapore robert nalin uh, we actually came up with this idea to form Tribal Tide, I think, in the early 90, 1992. Back then, we wanted to share the passion of drums. Um, it was the idea of late Edmund Branson Jr., let, let's, let's put this thing together. So we all come from different angles, you know, growing up, drummer, percussionist. So let's share the sound of drums. So we put the group together, we started off and uh, we went on. Uh, of course, we had other percussion band like uh, uh, by... Uh, the heartbeat percussion by Said. Uh, he was the pioneer before us. So, but we were a different, totally a different band because we 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 went hands on more on a, more like a drum set, Latin percussion, African drums, Brazilian drums, and uh, Indian percussions. And we also include a little bit of Malay drums, you know, sound and colors of it because we are not trained Malay percussionists, but. We like to use sounds. I mean, basically, Tribal Tide was a band. It's just not about drums and percussion. We went too much about sound and how do we incorporate sounds from different cultures. So I think we can. I can say we are one of the pioneers, you know. And um, then on after came a lot of other percussion groups, like which one I always uh, look up upon is uh, Wicked Ova. You know, I think I think they great. They are wonderful band. You know, those guys are amazing. They they just took it a different level. Uh, like that. Um, yeah, Tribal Tide was. Uh, my favorite percussion band, and I, when even when Ridwan came into the uh, into the industry, he was invited to play with us, you know, um, at many a times because his talent, his gift of his his gift of music for Malay drums was, you know, we needed his sound, you know, uh, to be part of the band. So yeah, Trouble Time is like a family, uh, family of drummers coming together. Any any point of time, it's just not four of us, you know. We can include anyone we want at any point of time in, in life, you know. It, it's, it's such a band. Yeah, and, and it's still going strong. It's still ongoing, right? Uh, yes and when when we want to feel like coming together, we'll come together. Otherwise, we are all doing our own thing. You know, we take a break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how about uh, Ridwan? I understand you are in, in a band called Orchestra Trio. Can you yes. tell us more about it? Yeah. Oh, the the band the band turned ten last year actually, and it's a very it's a big milestone for all of us. Uh, Ismahiri Putra Isha plays the gambus and the violin. Is Al Hafiz Jamat plays the accordion, um, the flute, and many other instruments. And me myself, the Malay percussion and drums. And the whole idea behind this formation is to have another representation of coming from the Malay traditional music scene. Um, and we wanted to push the envelope and the po the, the, po the possibility and to extend the potential of the the, the instrument itself. And like uh, like. What Matno um, mentioned earlier, they are also one of my favorite group of people to work with. Uh, we are we are bonded by friendship in pursuit of musical possibilities. Uh, and orchestra trio in its uh, ten years, we have not stopped yet. Uh, we are currently trying to write uh, a new set of songs. Hopefully, we will be able to present an album soon. Yeah, and we will be looking forward to that. And speaking of instruments, yeah. okay, maybe. Uh, Muhammad, no. We understand that you can play more than 25 percussion <laughs> instruments, right? So, I don't know. <laughs> out of all these 25, do you, do you have a favorite? Um, I won't say I have a favorite, but I think I spent a lot of time uh, practicing the tabla when I was a very young, at a very young age. And I think um, 
the sound of tablas and 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 everything that is about tabla is is very interesting, and uh, it opens up a lot of uh, knowledge for other percussion instruments. I, and I I guess I always find it very interesting to play the tabla. You know, I I feel that 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 is one thing that I always go back and play when I want to even play, even if I want to look into uh, 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 to further in other percussion instruments. Tabla is like my root, you know. It's like a lot of secrets in there for me. I just find it very amazing. I, though I don't practice it much, but it's it's something that I just love, you know, more than anything else I can say. Yeah. Do you have it with you now, the tabla? Yeah. So, can you just give us a short demo? Uh, well, I should say uh, I can give you a short demo, but um, one of the instruments that I fell in love at this current time for the past four years is the hand pan, which you have heard so you know and um like i said it uh, yes and and it, because i play the tabla and it's all about fingers and hands and everything you know so i i the approach is i i, I love to play the handband because of the way it is so it's So awesome. So Ridwan, how about you? Uh, yeah. Uh, Do you want to like maybe share with us a bit about Rabana? Uh, Rabana, Rabana has always been my first love since I was a, a a young boy growing up. It has never left my artillery of sounds and percussion instrument. And as I grow older, I try to expand and extend the possibilities of playing this instrument with different music. Um, you can see here it's a traditional style with rattan. This is a rope tune rubana and with me now, it's a modern tuning rubana with golden rings, <laughs> especially made by uh, Gunbano, uh, made in Singapore actually. Um, so yeah. this is how it looks, it looks like. Uh, I will play for you something. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Ridon makes it look very, very effortless, but it's actually very difficult to play. Trust me, you know, because <laughs> I I learned, I tried to learn playing Rabana for a brief time last year from Ridon, and I think I'm the worst in the world. No, you have Rabana to give yourself some credit. Everybody out there need to know that you're an actor who dance and sing and re yeah, read right. lines and you have to play drums. So it's 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 an added thing. So good job. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I mean I mean thanks for being so patient with 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 all of us last year. By the way, this was a show uh, called Medeka from Wild Rise last year where there was a segment where the whole cast was playing Rabana and Ridwan was our instructor. Okay, so we <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So without further ado, let's move on to our third song. Okay. So this song number three is by Ridwan Zalani, and the title is Gitu. Gitu. <laughs> Enjoy.
and that was Gi too. And with that, we will move on to the final song of this program tonight, which is by Muhammad Noor, Funky Hempen.
Yeah. Okay, and that Yay! was funky hand pen. Okay. Okay, so all good things have to come to an end, right? So as we uh... approach the final segment of tonight's program, I just want to find out, okay, so maybe uh Mr. Muhammad Noor first, okay, because you have been doing music in Singapore and, and for for so long. So personally, what do you look forward to the future of the Singapore music scene? And to all the people that is watching us now, what do you want to tell them? Firstly, I'd like to say thank you for watching us perform, you know, with, with the live music industry at, the, at this current time where, where we are not, uh, we are not uh, unable to perform live anywhere else and, and here on online and you are here watching us and supporting us. Thank you so much. I hope, I hope you continue to support with us with all your love. And we need that as, as practitioners and musicians. We need your support a lot. Um, and we want to share our music with you. So I think it's, it's wonderful that you're watching us. And for the music industry, um, I hope uh, everything comes, uh, will restart and, and start to grow back again. And uh, I hope to see more opportunities for musicians who have gone through these difficult times and for everyone, and not only just musicians, everyone who has gone through these difficult times. And um, I'm very pretty sure, I'm pretty sure that it will, it will grow and it will even grow much larger because I think we have experienced a lot. We, are le we, are, we have learned a lot of how we can improve from this period of time and I, I strongly believe that it will it will definitely grow much larger than before and we need the support of our Singaporean audience. Yes, well said. Thank you, Muhammad Noor. And how about you, Ridwan? So what do you have to tell the viewers that is watching us right now and what do you hope for for the future of the Singapore's music scene? I think we are all blessed to have each other even though in this testing time, in this this uh, this difficult moment, we can do our part. Um, and as musicians, I think the, the future ahead looks very bright for all of us if we continue to be positive and to stick to one another and support each other's growth. Um, for all the listeners out there, thank you for tuning in to us. I think there's a lot of programs. Everybody's trying to do so many things online. Let's give our support. The least we can do is like and share, like and share, like and share. The more people share our works, the more the musicians will feel the, the need to create and I think that's what we all need. We, we must persevere, stay positive, and keep creating. Um, our works are meant to be shared, always. Yes. Yes. So, how do you share your work? As in, if the followers right now want to follow your work, where can they go? Uh, for myself, um, you, you can always go on Instagram, Ridwan Zalani, Facebook, artist page, Ridwan Zalani, as well as the YouTube channel, The Ridwan Zalani. Um, and of, of course, all the other bands that I'm part of, you can always look for, for any one of us. Yeah, so take note. So Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Ridwan Zalani. And I think the link is right below or on top <laughs> with the posting. Okay, yeah, and how and, about and, you? <laughs> yeah, 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 Ridwan, yeah. Oh, that, that's also my dot com. Sorry, www.ridwanzalani.com. Yay! www.ridwanzalani.com. And I think the link is Yay. here as well. Yeah. Okay, so what about you? Thank um, you. Muhammad Noor? Where can um, the viewers follow your work? Uh, I've, uh, my, my Facebook page or Instagram is uh, everything is about uh, drummer Noor, as in D R U M M E R N N O O R. So Instagram, Facebook, um, YouTube is the same and uh, and also on my website as in www.dramanode.com. So yes. everything oh. is there. <laughs> yeah, everything is there and it's very easy. Drama no on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and .com and you can yes. find the links on the post as well. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, very sadly, we will have to end here for tonight and I hope that we can be, be, be together again. Okay, so thank you, Muhammad Noor. Thank you, thank Ridwan. You. And thank, thank you, everyone. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, okay. thank you everyone. Selamat malam, thank you, thank, thank, you. thank you, thank you. Bye-bye, good night. Okay, and so everyone, that was it. Is tonight's session of From the Living Room by NAC. I hope all of you have a great time, just, that, just as I did.
And please follow the NAC Facebook page for more episodes of From the Living Room and all of us can continue to enjoy SG culture anywhere. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>